Hi, welcome to Sasha's Guilt-Free Pleasures, the show about feeling good, healthfully, and guilt-free. I am a wellness coach with a nutrition certification, and my mission in life is to help people feel good. The theme of today's show is Kiss the Winter Blues Goodbye, and I'm going to share nourishing comfort foods, mood-boosting nutrition, and a special Valentine's Day aphrodisiac dessert. Tweet at Sasha's Guilt Free using the hashtag Guilt Free Winter to share about this show. This is my baby, Ananda Leela, and she's assistant cook today. And you can tweet about her using the tag Blissful Play because Ananda Leela means blissful play in Sanskrit. She's part German Shepherd. So we're going to be making a shepherd's pie today in honor of her. should be good. Sometimes you might have a big one and you might cut it even more. And just dice those. Lamb is a very nutritious meat because it's often pasture raised and fed grass, which adds a lot of nutrition into the meat. and it tends to be healthier than stand, your standard beef, which is often fed antibiotics and things that you wouldn't want to eat in excess of, of antibiotics when you're not sick. So that's, that's great. And we actually just want to brown it on the outside and not com completely overcook it because we're going to bake our shepherd's pie later. So we don't want to have overcooked meat. That's the number one way to cook your meat healthy is don't, don't do it well done if you can handle it. 
So we'll get our bowl back. And now that this is cooked to where we want it, this little pink, put it back in the bowl so we don't overcook it. And we'll also add a little bit more oil. This is where we add the root vegetables. They take a little bit longer to cook and we're going to saute them, browning them nicely. And we're also going to add the parsnip. So while the veggies are sauteing, we're going to mash up our pre-cooked yams. We have these beautiful orange yams that add color to this recipe, which is traditionally made with potatoes. And it is actually traditionally made with yam, or with lamb meat. Not a lot of people know that. But the shepherds in Ireland, they were shepherds of sheep. And so it's a, it's a traditional recipe made with the ingredients that they had available to them, which includes potatoes, white potatoes, lamb meat, peas, and turnip. And we're going to use some of those in today's recipe with a little bit of a twist, which I like. This is a little bit of a sweeter version and more flavorful than the traditional shepherd's pie. And it has a little bit more variety of vegetables, which is always good because that gets different nutrients into our dish. While those are finishing sauteing, I have fresh herbs, rosemary, tarragon, and thyme. Now, if you don't have a home herb garden or, and you don't have access to these fresh herbs, they're not available in all supermarkets, you can certainly use the dried. Looks very yummy. So now, we're going to add the shallots in here let those cook up I also have some pre-chopped garlic we use two garlic cloves for this recipe as well mix that in mmm I can smell those shallots already You'll be delighted with the aroma of shallots if you've never used them before. And now, I'm going to add the meat back in there. I'm going to use my trusty wooden tool to break the meat up a little bit more. So I'm also going to add my vegetable broth, homemade in my crock pot. Mm. And let that simmer. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit lower. Mm. This is the time that I also add my seasonings, the fresh herbs. flavors cook in there together. I'll also add some salt and pepper to taste however much you like. Mm. And a little bit of 
wheat flour. You can use any other kind of flour if you prefer a gluten-free diet. Just use a couple tablespoons that thickens it all up together so you don't have a watery filling to your pie or brothy. <laughs> Those are all blending together, those flavors. Also, adding the peas, another traditional ingredient. Sauces and peas. For generations, our family has perfected authentic Mexican dishes from seasoned chicken and beef to carnitas, arroz, and barbacoa. The Cardenas family has always followed the traditions of their ancestors when it comes to cooking. From the beginning, they've created authentic Mexican dishes from scratch using recipes that have been passed down and perfected over generations. This tradition of gathering around a great meal with family and friends is what their here, foods, strives to pass on. From our family to yours. So, we're also going to add some rosemary into the potatoes and a little bit of salt in there as well. You can add pepper too, but I personally think there's enough pepper in the filling and it does add a little too harsh of a flavor for the sweet potatoes. Match that up. Our filling is all combined and it's delicious. And we're going to add that into the pan. and it'll just get even better as we, as we cook it in the oven. Which you want to do until the top is browned and everything inside is warm. So then you put it in the oven at 375 for 20 to 30 minutes or until the top is golden brown. And that's how you make my yam and lamb shepherd's pie. And now I'm going to make a Thai spiced squash soup. This is a nice warming recipe for the winter time. And I'm going to start with some oil in the soup, the soup pot. I'm going to let that heat up and add the onion and the garlic to my recipe. Let that get a nice aromatic flavor in there, saute at the bottom. Now I've pre-roasted the squash with some coconut oil and I've just rubbed that on the cut side of the squash and roasted it in this pan until it's just soft flesh. And so it's soft enough that the, the rind is still hard and yet the inside is soft that we can scoop it right out easily into a bowl. And this will be the basis of our Thai spice squash soup. And uh, the spices in this soup are cumin, a little bit of crushed red pepper to taste so it doesn't have to be too hot if you're one who doesn't like it hot. And there's also going to be lemongrass. And if you can find it in your area, it can be challenging, tricky to find, but you might check your local Thai food restaurant. Kefir lime leaves. Those are a Thai ingredient. Mm, so, except that we're all done with that. We've got all our 
flesh out and good. Stir this around. The onions are getting translucent in the pan, and the aroma is coming out of them, which will add a flavor to the soup that we love. In the meantime, I have chicken broth, that's another ingredient, and I'll share what I did with the squash seeds. Before I roasted it, I scooped out the squash seeds, separated it from the flesh on the inside of the squash, and then I put them in a pan and toasted them lightly with some salt. And they make an excellent snack on their own that you can save for later once they're toasted, and high in protein and minerals very healthy and another great way to use all of your food for optimal nutrition and a budget friendly way of cooking at home. So now that the onions are ready to go, I'm going to add all of the other ingredients into the pot, chop up the squash a little bit if it didn't get chopped up enough when we scooped it out. Mm. Mm. It smells delicious already. And this is a kombucha squash. You can use pretty much any kind of squash for this recipe. I like the kombucha, the kombucha squash. It's an Asian squash, so it goes well with this recipe. And it's not super sweet. So a butternut squash, works perfectly fine. You just want to make sure your squash is about two pounds so you have enough flesh. Now we have our chicken broth we'll add in there. Depending on how big your squash is, you might want to add, let it simmer, maybe add a little bit. I also have lemongrass. Now this is the part, this gets filtered out. You'll want to scoop it out with a slotted spoon before the final step of blending it all together because lemongrass does not get soft as it cooks. It actually gets harder. You don't want a, a hard texture of chunk, lemongrass chunks in this nice smooth soup. Okay, we also are adding lime zest because this is what you substitute with if you don't have kefir lime leaves, which are hard to find, even here in New York City. <laughs> so we add, add the zest that we pre-zested with actually a, that's the peel, it's the grated peel of a lime. So we use the grater <laughs> instead of the special zesting tool. Those are dangerous, especially when they're new and sharp. So we try to avoid that when a grater works just as fine. We're also adding some cumin spice. This is very good. It's a nice spicy spice without being hot. We're also adding coriander seed. You can use ground coriander as well, but the coriander does actually cook and become soft and adds a nice little bit of a texture. And we have crushed red pepper. Now you can use a quarter teaspoon of that if you don't like it too hot, or you can use more if you like it hot, like I do. And here is an optional ingredient, fresh spicy pepper, which I love. So we are going to add most of that in there. And salt and pepper to taste. Black pepper, traditional, and salt. So we'll let that simmer for a few minutes and all the flavors blend together as it simmers. I've been simmering and stirring the soup occasionally for about 15 minutes, letting all the flavors blend together. The next thing is that we remove the lemongrass with a slotted spoon and pull out all those pieces that we don't want, put it back in the dish. And in 
our blender, you can also do this in the pot with an immersion blender, which is a really handy kitchen tool. That's where we're going to place the whole soup, the whole shebang up in there while it's all simmered up. <laughs> okay, scoop this out so we don't get the soup in our face. Smells delicious between the chicken broth and the squash. It's very tasty. Put our blender cap on very nicely. A high speed blender will work well, but any kind of blender is fine. And turn it on. Blended it up till the texture is all nice and smooth, and you can still see some of the spices in there to add a little bit of color and so that they're, they're whole or somewhat whole. And it's ready to serve. It's a very easy recipe, very tasty, and warming comfort food. And we have some garnishes that go with it as well. We have a little bit of full fat coconut milk. It's a very tasty addition. I just use a spoonful and I swirl it in to add a nice spiral. It makes a beautiful finish to the soup. I also have some coconut which I toasted in a skillet beforehand to bring out the flavor and I sprinkle that on, a little shredded coconut. It's very tasty on there. I have little chopped cilantro. Definitely want to add the cilantro. You have the coriander seed, which is the seed of cilantro. Cilantro is very healthy. And our squash seeds from before. Just sprinkle those on, add a nice crunch. You can also spice the squash seeds with cumin, pepper, anything that you added to the dish. And a little bit of cilantro leaf to add a beautiful finish to the garnish. And this is my Thai spice squash soup. And now I'm going to show you how to make my raw love chocolate pie. This is truly a guilt-free pleasure, and true pleasure at that. So we're going to stop, start with some finely chopped walnuts. Walnuts are very nutritious with healthy fats and oils, and they actually have cancer-fighting ingredients as well. You, or you want to use organic walnuts to get the best nutrition. We also have finely chopped dates. You can also do this in your high-speed blender so you don't have to pre-chop it. We're going to use some coconut oil to moisten it and cinnamon. I like quite a bit of cinnamon for the crust of this raw pie. That's what we're making right now. So I mix it all together and dates are an excellent sweetener. So you don't have to add any sugar to the crust and it's very sweet. So all we're going to do is simply press the crust into this beautiful heart-shaped bowl. It's almost Valentine's Day and this is an excellent recipe for Valentine's Day. And that's because chocolate, especially when it's in its raw cacao form, which is what the raw chocolate bean is called, it is an aphrodisiac because of the neurotransmitters that are in cacao. So it has theobromine, which is also the generic name for cacao, and that means food of the gods. And theobromine is a chemical that is a mild, non-addictive stimulant. And in, in actuality, cacao or chocolate has very little caffeine. 
even though it's often believed to have a high caffeine content. It also has nerve, it also has chemicals that stimulate serotonin in the brain, the brain's feel-good chemicals. Next, now that we have our crust all ready to go, we're going to mix up with our pre-mashed, pitted, and scooped out avocado flesh. This is going to be the base of the chocolate mousse pie. Very yummy and nutritious. So we're going to add coconut oil. We're going to add quite a bit of vanilla. That just adds really great flavor. Really strong vanilla flavor. We're going to add agave nectar, raw honey, or maple syrup, whichever sweetener you prefer. Make sure it is a liquid one, or add more coconut oil. And I melted the coconut oil in a double boiler. You can also use a glass bowl over a pot of boiling water. And I'm also going to add the raw cacao powder. Now raw cacao also has anandamide. And as we know, ananda is the Sanskrit word for bliss. And so it's a bliss chemical, a neurotransmitter that makes you feel good. Cacao also has a lot of great minerals. It has magnesium, which is good for de-stressing and relaxing and healing the body's muscles. Cacao also has iron and calcium and quite a few other good nutrients. So this is going to go into the Vitamix where it will we'll blend it to a chocolate mousse-like consistency. And it's, but it has, unlike traditional chocolate mousse, it is non-dairy and very healthy. blended it to a mousse-like consistency. You simply scoop it out of the blender and into the raw pie crust. And this, you, you might be like, how is that going to taste with avocado? Well, with these, this combination of ingredients, it tastes very chocolatey and sweet and with quite a vanilla flavor as well. So it does actually taste like chocolate mousse and it's a truly guilt-free pleasure. Mm. And you can serve it either chilled or as is at room temperature. It's ready to eat. And it's really lovely with a little garnish of some berries, some coconut sprinkled on top, and some of our chopped walnuts. And voila! That's how you make my raw love chocolate pie. So today we made the yam and lamb shepherd's pie, the squash soup with Thai spices, which also makes a great sauce or uh, an addition to risotto as a thickener and flavor adder. And we made the raw chocolate love pie. Thanks for watching Sasha's Guilt-Free Pleasures. I hope to see you next time.